great is your faithfulness to me. I'll put my faith in Jesus, my anchor to the crown, my hope and firm foundation. He'll never let me down. Ah. Elder Obia Julu Okafo Anthony. A life of diligence, focus, and faith. Excellence, it has been said, is not a single act, but a habit. For some people who epitomize excellence, at least in the eyes of their fellow men and women, it is a habit that has been cultivated over the course of many years, even a lifetime. Elder Anthony Okafo Obiajulu is one of such people. At age 74, it can be said that the successes and triumphs that have attended his illustrious life journey and his endeavors till date were not products of a sudden flight or a single masterstroke, but that of a lifetime of diligent effort and a steady progression upon the ladder of success and greatness. His life of courage and single-minded determination in the face of overwhelming odds, a commitment to best practices and an unswerving faith in the providence of a wise, loving, and faithful God. Born without the proverbial silver spoon, the young Anthony made his dogged way to the pinnacle of the destiny he knew his potentials and capacity for handwork entitled him to, in a manner that now serves as an inspiration to others, especially the coming generation. It is a life that began on the 12th of December, 1948, when a baby boy was born into the family of Mr. Mathias Obiajulu and Mrs. Janet Obiajulu, who hailed from the community of Nza Ozubulu in Ekusugo, local government area of Anambra State. Anthony was the fourth child of his parents. His early education began at St. Gregory's Primary School in his hometown Nza Ozubulu in Ekusugo and ended at the St. Kelvin Primary School. At the time, primary school usually culminated in what was then known as Standard Six. When I grew up, I met my mother and my father when I began to know something. Then there was one thing my mother did to my life because I don't use to tell lies. So my mother stick on that. Whenever I went out, I had problems with people. My mother would now come, follow me down to that place. When you get there, he said, my son is not alive. And I grew with that. So I take that in grew and my my mother, I'm the fourth child of my mother. And the one who feed my family, my mother clothed them till they old and die. So within my father, I don't have a problem with my father. And my mother, I don't have a problem with them. Whatever I supposed to do as a son, I did it for them and they were happy before they left this world. Standard Six effectively marked the end of a formal education for young Anthony Obiajulu, but it began a lifetime of entrepreneurship, starting from his entrepreneurship in the city of Aba, in what is today's Abia State, to which he traveled in 1965. This was during the period of economic recovery in the aftermath of the Nigerian Civil War while there, he was attached to a spare parts store. Obiajilu's stay in Aba was, however, short-lived as he returned to Nza or Zubulu in 1967 to begin a business in palm produce, which he obtained from the Ada Palm Estate and sold in retail. He also put the lessons of his apprenticeship in the spare parts to use as he sourced spare parts from around various neighborhoods in Ozubulu and Nobi for sale in Onicha. 
These enterprises were in addition to his activities in farming, fishing, and hunting before, during, and after the Civil War. Well, I went to Aba as an apprentice. I stayed uh, with my senior brother for some a year or two years, a year plus. Then he left me to my head. Then I started. Then, with the little money I have, I have to use it to begin to buy things. Gradually, 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 I began to make money at the age of 18. Never one to rest in his oars, Elda Obiagilu's restless entrepreneurial spirit constantly sought new outlets for his full expression. Because of that little knowledge I have about square pass, I got a shop. When I got a shop, that shop was too small. I just put a counter one side, then the extra end is where I keep my belongings. My stove, my box. In the, mo in the morning, early morning, I woke up in the morning and carry the tuna, come outside and come and uh, cook. And make sure I bath before four o'clock because if I don't bath before, I cannot bath. I stayed there for one good year. I make business about a year. I have to buy a bicycle. That bicycle is the one that I use from Ajagule to Lagos to go and look for goods and sell. But when I, I never buy the bicycle, any day that I will buy something that is heavy, that is long, I have to trek from Idumota to Ajagule with the leg. Okay, within some, a year again, I bought a motorcycle called Bentley. I used Bentley about a year. I bought 195. For 195, uh, for that 195, that time I went home. I started to tell them to give me a place to build, which they gave me. I fenced it. I started building. I don't live my life because others are doing this and this. I check myself in a business area. Before I do anything, I will check myself whether I'm able to do this. When they are building upstairs at home, people say, why do you build downstairs? I say, forget it. Do you know my account? I say, no, I build my downstairs and stay there. When the time's upstairs reach, I build. So I start my life. And I married early, 21 years plus. Anthony Obiagilu's next port of call was Lagos, Nigeria's commercial nerve center, to which where he journeyed in 1973 in search of greener pastures after the less than satisfactory outcomes of his previous ventures. His break eventually came when he started a motor spare parts business, which he registered two years after his arrival in Lagos, under the name Tony Bross. Ten years later, it changed the company's name to A.O. Obiajulu and Sons Limited. Thanks to Elda Obiajulu's entrepreneurial acumen, his strong work ethic and his knowledge of the spare part business A.O. Obiajulu and Sons grew into a household name, both locally and internationally, in the procurement and sales of spare parts for heavy-duty vehicles and trucks, as well as construction equipment, among others. Not satisfied with merely procuring and selling these items, the company later stepped up its value chain with the fabrication and sale of various equipments from 1989 onwards to which it added the fabrication and sale of truck parts as tipper buckets while still importing and selling caterpillar and other heavy duty equipment the company later invested in chinese trucks and trailer bodies with the steady expansion of its portfolio our dad day is a very Nice person. He's a uh, he's always a uh, a good advisor to all that gets close to him, especially in the business industry. Whenever you have issues as regards any kind of business, and you go to him, honestly, you will not go back the same. A very high esteemed integrity fellow. 
is a man touched by destiny. If in the normal parlance, say, my dad's touch, I think whatever he touches turns him to gold. And in the process, he has used this, he has used what fortune entrusted to him to uh, enhance humanity's life. He is an honest man. If you are dealing with him, open up to him, be honest to him. He will, he will not fail you in his honesty. He is forgiving as a Christian. Here is a man who has touched life. Even as he established his indelible footprints in the spare parts and mechanical equipments business, Elder Anthony Okafor Obiajulu never lost the right of his passion for farming. On the contrary, his newfound success and growing affluence gave him the freedom to embrace the passion to the fullest. But this time, instead of retreating to the obscurity of his hometown, he located his farming in Lagos, his base, as well as neighboring Ogun State. He colonized food, but today, food has all become good. So, I would advise somebody who has money and have fertile land, uh, no land to plant, let the person go into farming. Because one area cannot help us because, you see, weather is changing. Flood is now taking over in northern part. So they may plan to hope that we are going to get something out of it, then flood may come and switch them off. So everybody will stay hungry. So my advice is, wherever you are, even whether you are in Lagos, if you see a small place, put something there. It will help you. Even in Lagos, I farm here. My grandpa is an Adokima. He's a disciplinarian. He does so many things in life. Since when I was a child, he paid for my school fees when I was climbing. He cared for others. See, now we see no one that paid for my school fees. I love him so much. My grandfather is the most precious thing ever. The thing I love about grandpa so much is that he's kind and caring to people and others. I really love that about him so much. Having proved his mettle in business by dint of hand work, Iron discipline, a refusal to be daunted by challenges and setbacks, and an eye for opportunities. It came time for Obiajulu, or Elder, as he is fondly called by his admirers, to take a step away from the hurly-burly and the adventure of business and begin to savor the rest of his life journey on the slow lane. A long-standing member of the Ozubulu Christian Fellowship in Lagos, the Septuagenarian is now using his retirement to re-engage fully with a social and spiritual essence, thanks to his renewed commitment and to the lessons he had learned from his business ventures. He is well-placed to impact valuable life lessons to young people within a sphere of influence in both spirituality and business entrepreneurship. If I have been passing a bad route, I will not call my son or my daughter to follow me. Before you go to a place, call your come on, let my people come on. You saw something in there. That's the only part to remain. If they pull and give their life to Christ, I will tell you there's no problem. I know first, people must offend somebody. But if you offend somebody, if you have Christ, before you get to that place, you forgive the person. That's what the word of God says. So there's no problem. You can see them. They are with me. As the first son and as the first child, I have not even done as much as he has done. So even for that, that's why I use perfect. Because if I were to have keyed up in building the way he wanted, you know, you kiss your guitar. So it made me, if I were to key, I would even say I've not even gone. You are still following that step because he's still creating that year. He's a man of dignity, he's hardworking, he's a kind man, he's a man where you are in he's there, he's a man who better our future. He has made his mark uh, in issues that has to do with uh, family, he made his mark uh, business wise, he has made his mark uh, societal wise and all around. He has been very, very active 
and has also worked towards the development of the Kindred and the Inza village, which is where we come from. And Ozobulu at Plach. He's a good man, he's a great man, land hockey man. My grandpa, he had done a lot for me. I love him so much. He meant, he meant so much to me. I do. There's a lot I love about him. His active involvement in our growing up. He has always been a father. He has always been there. From only God knows when till date. For me alone, we are close. He's, he's, he's more like he's more than a father to me, he's like a friend to me. Because when I, I woke up to him, he's always there to advise me. Along the line, he was chipping on two advices. Now, if you pick it up and hold strong to it, believe me, it will help. I give glory to God because some of my mates, if you ask them their name, they don't remember again. But uh, at 74, the wisdom God gave to me, he remained like that. They didn't move an inch. Finals, I said that I'm retired. I can do business. If you tell me, give me something, I'll tell you how to buy and how to sell. An active player in the affairs of his family, his community, and his church, Elder Anthony Obiajulu was chosen as a chairman of Nza Family Association while in his early 30s and went on to serve for a total of 14 years. A testimony to his mettle and the trust his people placed on him. Other positions which he served in were vice chairman and then chairman of the Lagos branch of the family association for over six years. His profile was further boosted when he became the chairman of the Ozubulu Development Union ODU, during which period his administration was able to acquire a piece of land for the construction of Ozubulu Civic Center in Lagos, a building which stands today as a proud monument to tenacity, a sense of purpose and commitment to the general good. No wonder, then, that at the end of his stewardship as chairman of both the Nza Family Association and Ozubulu Development Union, his grateful kinsmen and compatriots voted to name Elder Anthony Okafo Obiajulu the best served chairman. It is a thoroughly well deserved honor. He's a very great man. I've been hearing stories about him before I get married to my husband. I don't even know how to put it, but I'll just put it in the sense that you he is a great man. He's a man with a large heart. He loves the grandchildren. He should, I can't. I can't put it in words. I, can, I haven't seen this. He's a, he's a man. I said, ah, my husband doing this. Just that, even I know my husband can pay the school fees of my, of my first son and my first daughter. But as being the first son, the first grand son and the first granddaughter, he took the responsibility of paying their school fees. So he's not an, is this thing is extraordinary love. That's a call. I can, I can call you not only a father in law, a father. He's a kind man, very kind. Not only a kind man, he's my playmate, so then I will post him. See, he said, if not that I am very, very fat, if, if I beat you, if I say that, I say, no, I come, that's fine. Because he's my playmate, he's my uh, friend, who said that. I would say he's reliable, he's understanding, he has wisdom, he's generous, when I mean generous. And if I'm to come back in the next life, I would choose him to be my friend. His fidelity to the body of Christ is no less remarkable, nor is his labor in the Lord's vineyard any less involving. From the beginning of his immersion in the things of God back in 1993, Elder Anthony Okafor Obiajulu has embarked on a spiritual journey in association with a number of Christian organizations and Odyssey that has now culminated in his present engagement with the Deeper Life Church, where he now worships and serves his Creator and his community 
of brethren and fellow believers. When I go to some churches, they will preach another thing and do another thing. And they will begin to do some things. When they gather money for church, they will eat it. So, with all that, I'm not okay with some churches. So, I decided to look for a church who will set in and do what they say. Humility is what I saw first. Somebody that serves God, not you are serving God and you are arrogant or you are proud. So that humility is what made me to keep in. Jesus has done me well. You have done me well. You have done me well. You have done me well, Jesus. Everything is going well in business, anything I'm doing. Although, if you want to serve God, don't think that people will come home for you. It's not possible. They will say a lot of things against you. The, yeah, people will say, leave them grown away and they can say a lot of things. But if you want to serve God, close your ear and do the thing God wants. Forget about what a woman being wants. A widower, Elder Obiajulu, was married to Mrs. E. Former A. Glad Obiajulu of blessed and beloved memory, with whom he had six children and a host of grandchildren. My daddy, love your presence, your guidance, everything about you is great. So, daddy, you live long. This is just beginning. Daddy, we love you. Remember, bless daddy. I'm wishing you a very, very happy birthday, a long life, and more prosperity upon his life. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, great daddy. Happy birthday to you. I wish you long life, happiness, joy, all the fruits of spirit. Uh, I wish him, first of all, long life and good health. Because I still want him to stay many more years ahead. Yeah. He has done well as a man. I wish him understanding. I wish him anything he wish himself. Your children will always remain a blessing to you. You will see all of them, your children's children. I pray that God will give him long life in good health. I wish him long life, more joy, more love, good health. I wish him happy birthday, long life, prosperity, good health, and heaven at last. Happy birthday, Grandpa. I love you so much. Thank you for all your love for me. Jesus, you're my one. I'm hoping I can't just do it alone.